Hi everyone, Joy here. We're going to talk about some tips and I'm going to answer a couple questions that you had. Okay, so this will be video number two in my So Long playlist. Tips and tricks. Alright, now if you have not watched Glenda show you how to measure and how to draw out your pattern. There's one thing that she shows you that's really important. And I, I actually don't have a difference when I do it, but you might. This is how you measure your crotch length. Very, very important measurement. Please be very careful to do it correctly. Have your husband help you, your daughter help you, somebody help you if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself. You have your elastic around your waist. The waist I'm using is where my belly button is. My actual, where I dent the most, is up, clear up here, and I don't want my pants up there. So I'm using my belly button waist, that's where I put my elastic, but this isn't to show you that. I want to show you something that you need to do if you haven't watched Glenda do it. You put the tape underneath, 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 underneath the elastic. If you put it at the top of the elastic, you're going to have a waistband up by your bra. <laughs> Put the tape under the elastic in the front, through your legs, and up to the bottom of your elastic in the back. I don't have any elastic on, that's not what I'm showing you. After you get it there, pull it pretty snug. Don't let it hang. You should be able to feel it against your body. Hold it tight in the front and in the back, and then do what she calls a sit me down, where you just play like you're going to sit down. And see if the tape moves, pulls down. You'll have to hold it a little bit loosely to see if it pulls down. But if it does, that means that when you sit down in your pants, you're going to need more room than when you're standing up in your pants. Makes sense. Now, since I make my pants out of a twill or a denim that has a little bit of stretch in it, it allows for that. So I don't even worry about it, and my tape doesn't move when I do the sit me down anyway. But that's tip number one. Be sure you do the sit me down is going to cause it. All right. The next tip is about measuring as well. What if you have one high hip and one low hip? What do you do? Do you make two different patterns? No. If you have a high hip and a low hip. Measure your length of your pants from your high hip. Measure the length of your pants from your high hip like Linda shows you to do it. Stand on the tape, measure down to the floor, down to your ankle, wherever you want it. But do your high side. This is my high side. Then, when I cut out the pants, I just lay the pattern down and I cut it out. It's going to be for my high side. Both. The left front and the right front, the left back and the right back are all going to be to fit my high side. What do I do? When I sew the right sides together, the front is sewn to the back. Make very, 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 very sure you know which leg tube is your right leg. Put it on. Pull it up. Make sure it's for your right leg. Then what I do is I lay that down on the table and I mark a half inch down. <clears throat> Let's take this pair of pants. So this is my right side right here. And you can see right away it's lower than the left. I mark right here on this right side seam one half inch down. Doesn't matter, seam allowance, whatever. Top of the pants, it's going to have the seam allowance in it still. I mark one half inch down, and then I draw a line over to nothing to center back, and I draw a line with a ruler over to nothing to center front. Okay? So it goes down into a point at my side. No, it's, it goes down to my belly in the front and kind of straight in the back. It depends on where your waist is. But the point is, you're lowering it a half inch. A half inch at the side, taper it to nothing, center front. A half inch at the side, taper it to nothing at center back. Then, you will have two legs. The right leg 
will be for your short hip. Well, in my case, my low hip is on the right. Yours might be on the left. I then have a right leg and a left leg. So that's how I do the high hip, low hip. If I'm needing the tuck through my hip, like Philly needed it, that has to be done in the paper. You do that in the paper. So that's already done before you cut out your pants, okay? So that's how that works. Okay, did I show you my four pair of pants here? One, two, three, four. All made, adjusted, finished, and worn in less than a week. Okay? That's why we need to get all our ducks in a row so we can make a whole bunch of pants. All right. Let me see what else did I want to tell you. Oh, yes, another important measuring tip. When you're measuring to figure out how long you want your pant, we did this with Phyllis, and she measured in her bare feet. So when she tried the pants on, she had her shoes on, and all of a sudden the pants were too short. We're like, well, what happened? What happened? Well, duh. <laughs> Neither one of our lightning fast minds was working that day. <laughs> You've got to measure with your shoes on. Are you going to wear five inch heels? Are you going to wear cowboy boots? Are you going to wear sandals? What are you going to wear with them? Measure your leg to the floor with your shoes on. And then subtract an inch or however you usually do that for your leg. I subtract an inch from the floor. All right, that's a very important tip. All right, elastic. What elastic do I use? Well, I'm going to tell you what elastic I don't use <laughs> to start with. Don't use a mushy elastic. Don't use one of these soft ones. This is Peggy Sager's elastic, and it's wonderful for a million things. But it is not good for pulling through a casing because it twists really bad. I don't like that. You won't like it. I've used it, but I've pulled it out two or three times before I got it back in right. I use an elastic that has some kind of ribbing. Let me show you up close. You can see here, this elastic has those little stripes and those little ribs. That helps it to stay straight when you're pulling it through a casing. Use a big safety pin. All right, before I put the pin in, I'm going to fold it one more time. There you go. Now you got no loose end sticking out, okay? You got this little kind of a fat end to start with. Put your pin in it. Stick it in. It'll stay shut. Now, if you trust your pin, go ahead and pull it through. <laughs> I pulled one through, I think it was this one, a couple times, and every time it would pop open inside. So, I saw somebody wrap some tape around the end of it to hold it together as it's going through the casing. That's a good idea. I use the removable tape. You can see how I have the end rolled. See how it's rolled? That makes it stay straight up better in your casing. And you're going to have an inch, an inch and a quarter casing to pull this through. I have tape around the head of the pin. I have used removable tape. It'll stay on there long enough. But it's a lot easier to get off if you use removable tape. <laughs> okay? What size of elastic do I use? I started off in the purple pair with one inch elastic. All the other pairs have one and a quarter inch. I like the one and a quarter inch. I just like my waistband to be a little higher. I wouldn't go higher than one and a quarter, but you can if you want to. It's your waistband. One and a half might be nice. I think two would be, two inch elastic is more for yoga pants and stretchy pants. Okay, I bought the elastic I used for mine at Hobby Lobby, one and a quarter inch wide, and it's got these ribby things in it. Let me show you up close again. The ribby things, see? It just kind of keeps it more stiff. All right? So that's what kind of elastic I use. I don't measure it. I don't measure it. I just take the whole thing, the whole thing, and I start with one end. 
and I shove it through. You know, it's only going through the back. I shove it through the back and then I just let it hang. And then I go in the bedroom in front of my mirror. Oh, and once I get to the other end, I, pin, I take the pin out and I pin it to the pant. The end I fed through, I pin to the pant. And you guys will see me do this when I make my pants. And so the rest is just hanging. So then I put the pants on and I just pull this string. Pull it, pull it, and pull it, and pull it, and pull it, and pull it until it feels right. <laughs> and then I cut it about two inches past that just to be sure. Then I put it inside the pant, put another pin in it, arrange it, pull the pin on, walk around in it. Is it still too baggy or is it just right? Okay, so that's how I do elastic. When you press your pants, you're going to have two long tubes to press. You got this tube and this tube, and you want to press it on top of this. You lay this out flat like this, and you want to press it. And you're pressing these two seams in here. You have the out seam and the in seam. I sew mine so one seam goes one way and the other seam goes the other way. So they butt up to each other like in a quilt block. So, in order to get that press right, you need to be able to press just one side of this tube. The only way you can press one side of the tube is to put something up inside the tube, the leg, I'm calling it a tube, put something up inside the leg, then it allows you to press one side, turn it over, press the other side. So let me show you what I use. I use one of these. This is a bolt that fabric comes on. I think I had it in my closet with interfacing on it. I, at my other house, have a, a board that was actually made for this purpose. And it's a um, silver foil looking board. And it's so about that long and about three inches wide. And it's for putting up inside arms or legs of garments. But if you don't have that, this is a really good second best choice. Look at this. Look there. It goes right in the leg. See? So then it's on your ironing board. You can make sure this seam, put your hand in here, make sure the seam's going the way it's supposed to go, then press it. Actually, the pants inside out when I'm doing this. Yeah, the pants inside out when I'm doing that part. So you just can see it, it's right there in front of you. So you just make sure that this is going one way and this is going the other way. Then when you take it out, and from then on and forever, when you press the leg, the seams butt up to each other here, and it makes it really nice for pressing, as you can see. Now, if you don't care that your pants are pressed, then hey, however I think, I did not care for the way um, one of the pants that we showed you looked because it had not been pressed yet, and it just makes all the difference in the world. In my mind, any kind of clothing, <laughs> unless it's a knit t-shirt, doesn't look much difference, pressed or unpressed. But anyway, you understand? This is the thing fabric. If you don't have any, next time you go to Joanne's, just ask them for one. I got a trash can full of them. I got dozens of them all over the place. Ask them if you can have one. Let me see, is there anything else? I told you about moving the front dart to where the crease is. Oh, there is another tip. After you've gone to all that trouble to find your crotch, length and you've divided it into the front to your water outlet valve and the back to your water outlet valve. Write it down. <laughs> this has been hanging on my wall for two weeks. <laughs> I don't want to forget it. <laughs> well it's been hanging on my wall since 123, <laughs> however long that is. And this is after I thought it was 26, and after I thought it was 28, and after I thought it was 27 and a half, this was the final final that I really, really liked. And so I wrote it down, I put it on the paper pattern, I put it on the envelope, and I've got it hanging on my wall. <laughs> Remember your crotch. So, then, sometimes, I don't really know why, but sometimes, after you've done all that crotch stuff on your Sure Fit Designs pant, 
Sometimes the length might be a quarter inch off or something. Uh, Glenda explained it to me, but I don't remember what she said now. <laughs> so measure that and make sure that the crotch on the paper pattern agrees with your numbers that you figured out from all your measurements, okay? That's real important. If it's a quarter inch off, fix it. Add it to the top of the waist. Add it to the crotch. If you think um, you really need it most, you know, going through your legs, around your body, add it to the crotch. If you think you need it most at the top of the waist, add it there. It's a quarter inch. Put it somewhere. Okay? Okay, do I have any more tips? Well, let me look. I don't think so. I think that's all the tips I have right now. So, this will be so long video number two with the tips and the tricks. Number one should be right above. And it has the rules and the hashtags and the prizes and all the information and the description in the show more box. Okay? So you can always pop back to the video number one in this playlist to look at that. This is tips and tricks. Next one will be laying out the pattern on the fabric. Okay? See you then.